Hello, 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 hello. What's good? What is good? What is good? How are you on this Friday evening or Saturday or Sunday or Monday, depending on when you're watching the replay? Uh, it's I, Lene Javette, the CEO and founder of Upscale and the War, as well as the creative behind the Black Power Movement. Thank you so much for joining me on this Friday. I'm going to give a couple of you guys some time to get into the room. Usually what I do during this time is it allows me to see if I'm live. Am I live? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Uh, let's see. So let me find myself over here on StreamYard. I see. Oh, good. Good evening. Good evening. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. I am live. I can see myself. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? It is Lene Javette. I have not been live on this platform in a minute. Hey, Andy, how are you doing tonight? What's good? What's good? I was like, you know what? I need to get on here and go live before people get out into their Friday night uh, shenanigans and start having a good time. It's date night tonight. It's, it's happy hour tonight. Folks is out with their homegirls, their homeboys. So I was like, let me go on tonight really quickly and have a brief conversation. So as you come into the room, please say hi. Please say hello. Let me know where you're chiming in from. Um, hit the thumbs up button here. The, hit the share button. We're going to be talking about looking good and feeling good tonight. This is one of the themes that we have at the Black Power Her uh, Lifestyle Retreat. If you have been keeping up with me this week, you know that I've been going live every single day this week um, because what I am doing is, hey, Marilyn, what's up, Sherelle? Um, I am having conversations around the Black Pow Her Lifestyle Retreat. We did the Black Pow Her Business Conference earlier this year, and it was amazing. And what I decided to do was come back and focus on life, right? So we're doing the Black Pow Her Lifestyle Retreat. And so what I'm doing every night is just dropping a little bit of information about each one of the topics. And so tonight we're talking about look good, feel good, how to present the best you. Hey, Valerie from Chicago, what's up? And so that's what we're going to do tonight. The first night we talked about um, work-life balance. Is there such a thing? Um, can Black women have it all? And we talked about what that's like. We talked about why do we take on so much? Um, why is it hard to ask for help? Um, how do you delegate? We had that conversation on the first night. Last night, we talked about your money script and the relationships that we have with money. How, how, how do those happen? And most importantly, what do they affect? Oftentimes when people talk about money or your money script or the the the, the script being S-C-R-I-P-T, what you say, what you write about money to yourself, right? We talked about how that affects people. And a lot of times people just think, oh, it affects your money from the perspective of your budget and your savings. And that's not true. It affects your money from every perspective, not just how you save, but also what you think you should be paid if you're an employee, how much you're going to charge if you're an entrepreneur. Your relationship with money is bigger than just budgeting. So if you missed that last night, I highly recommend you go and watch it. If you're looking to uh, grow your coin purse or stack stack some some monies, then take a listen to that one. Tonight, I want to talk about um, something I think, something that's near and dear to my heart, right? It's looking good and feeling good. I will tell you that all this week, every single night that I have been on, I have gotten inboxes, emails, text messages, like, damn, girl, you looking good. <laughs> and uh, let me just say thank you. I appreciate it. To be 45, heading to 46, uh, it feels good to still feel good, if you know what I mean, right? Um, if you are in the comments, let me know. Did you have a good day today? Are you feeling good? Like, are you feeling good about yourself? Are you feeling good about life? Are you feeling good about where you are in your career? Are you feeling good about your relationship? Are you feeling good about your health and wellness? Are you feeling good about what you ate today? Are you feeling good about how much money you have in your bank account? Are you feeling good about the, the your network, the girlfriends and or your homeboys that you have? Like, are you feeling good? I like to play on words because oftentimes we simplify conversations, right? Oh, if somebody asks you how you doing, I'm good. You have a good day today? Yeah. We simplify a lot of things with, I feel okay, I feel good. When really, we're not good. We don't feel good. I'll, I'm going a, I'm to a tell you the truth. I'm going to raise my hand. This pandemic has had me not feeling good because 
running around here in my sweat clothes did not help me when it came time to get dressed. You know what I'm saying? Outside is opening up. The world is opening up. So now I got to put my real clothes on, like my real pants, my real uh, shirts and things of that nature. And they don't fit. So I'm not feeling real good right now, right? And so we're going to have a conversation around looking good and feeling good. Again, as you come into the room, please say hi, say hello. Let me know you're here. Let me know where you're chiming in from. Tonight, we're talking about looking good and feeling good. Um, one of the reasons I like this conversation is because you can, you can look good, and a lot of Black women do this. Look good on the outside. Smile, hair done, nice car, nice house, look good, but don't feel good on the inside. Don't feel good about the job you go to. Hey, Dallas. Don't feel good about the job you go to. Don't feel good about the money that you're making. Don't feel good about, I mean, there's 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 so many different things that happen in our lives that make us not feel good. And social media doesn't help. Social media does not help. You have the likes of these relationship gurus that are online that would try to make you think that after a certain age, you're not worthy. After a certain age, you can't have a relationship. After a certain age, you can't be in shape. After a certain age, you can't dress a certain kind of way. You're not desirable. It doesn't help none. And yet, you still have, or at least I see, I still see a whole lot of beautiful Black women getting married over 40 on social media. Hey, London, blessings queen, you're looking good, but are you feeling good? Exactly. Sometimes we, we have to ask folks that, especially, especially Black women, because we do such a good job of looking good even when we don't feel good. We do such a good job of holding it together and making it look easy. We do such a good job of showing up to work and, and putting all, giving it our all and leaving there. And, and being exhausted. We do a really good job of pouring out of our cup into the point where we're empty and we're exhausted. But we look good doing it. So my question is, how can we look good and feel good? What does it mean to feel good? Like, what does that look like? If somebody asked you, what makes you feel good? What would, what would you say? What would your answer be? Is it money in the bank? Is it being a certain size in your clothes? Is it having a seat at the table? Is it being paid the same as the other person who's, who's, who goes to the same job as you, but they do less work and they get paid more than you? Is it your kids acting right? Is it living in a certain neighborhood? Like, what is it? Somebody said money. Ooh, money. So money makes you feel good. Self-care, putting ourselves first. Let me let me throw some of these up. So Fly in between, my already said money. Um, hey, I think it's oh girl, I'm gonna mess your name up. I'm gonna have to call you Miss Norris, okay? She says self-care, putting ourselves first. Okay. That makes you feel good. Sometimes it's just sometimes it's something. Oh, ooh, let's see. It says salute queen. Hey. Sometimes it's it's something as simple as getting your nails done, taking the time to get a massage. Sitting at the pond, writing, journaling with with uh, with the with the with the ducks out there. Sometimes is does anybody self date? Does, does anybody take themselves out on a date on here? Like sometimes for me, sometimes it's just going and grabbing lunch, sitting in the sitting in a window seat, having a glass of wine. Sometimes that's what makes me feel good in that moment. Like it's been a rough week. It's been a long day. Some shit didn't work out this week. So I need to just go and spend some time with myself, pat myself on the back, love on me. So I'm just going to go here, here and grab myself, grab myself some lunch and grab a glass of wine and just sit here. And that will make me feel good. Just Us said relaxing. Mary A said to be at peace with self, living in reality. Say that. She said, I don't want a fake world. She's like, my real reality, peace in my real reality would make me feel good. Ms. Norris says, live for short. Oh, live. Okay, thanks, live. But Ms. Norris worked. Okay. Um, Self-dating and massage. I, for, people ask me all the time, like, are you embarrassed to go on a self-date? Like, 
No, like who's going to date me? Let me rephrase it. Let me, let me make sure I say this right because I don't, I, don't want no, I don't want no smoke. It's not who's going to date me better than me. It's I can't wait around for a date to go on a date. Now, let, me, let me make sure I say it right. It's I can't wait around for a date to go on a date. And so when we talk about looking good, feeling good, if I want to get dressed up and look good and I want to feel good, sometimes I have to be the leader in that. I have to be the one that says, you know what, tonight I'm feeling like going to wherever the wherever the case might be. It might be Benihana's or something. And I can do that. I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to look good. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm going to make myself good. And I'm going to go out and, and treat myself good. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, there's nothing wrong with being the person that makes you look good and feel good. Society will make us feel like there's a stigma against being a strong Black woman who can also self-love and take care of yourself, which is not to say that you don't need a man, which is not to say you don't want a man. That, that's absolutely not what I'm saying in any kind of way, shape, or fashion, or form. But what I am saying is you, we shouldn't have to wait on those things in order to look good and feel good. That's what I'm saying. Um, somebody said, serving others, working out, surprising my wife with random moments and activities. You know what, sir? I like you already. I can't see your face, but you sound like a, a good brother to me. Um, Janelle says plenty of times. I love it. So you do self date. You do go out, take yourself out, make yourself feel good. Uh, Liv says once a month or as needed for maintenance. Somebody said being out on the ocean. I like that. Liv, who, who is this? Uh, Mateos Raphael said, F men, I need a bag like Rihanna. <laughs> Speak your truth. She said, he, he said, I, I don't hunt men. I hunt money bags. Look, look, there is a time and a place. There is a season for all things. Sometimes you have to be about the bag and other times you could be about, you know, whatever that, that might be, but it comes, it, it, it's all okay. Like it's all okay. We don't have to pick and choose, right? Sometimes you're on the hunt for the man. Sometimes the man is on the hunt for you. Sometimes you want to hunt for the bag and sometimes the bag is trying to, to secure you. Like it goes both ways, right? I believe that when we have these conversations around looking good and feeling good, um, when you get over, like I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 46 in September. And I would say probably these last six months, I have been very intentional about looking good to feel good. I have not worn a dress like an actual, you know, silhouette dress in years. I wear skirts, you know, I'll wear, um, you know, like the, like the dress for your body type of a dress where, you know, it's belted high and stuff like that. But I have not just put on like a dress and zipped it up in the back and just like slank, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm, I feel like I have not. Um, and so I'll feel good, but sometimes I just don't feel like I look good. And so one of the things I've been very intentional about, and let me say this, I'm not by myself. I've talked, been speaking to a lot of black women lately over like 35 or 40 who just don't feel like they still, you know what I'm saying? Like that 30 swag is just a little bit different than, you know, the 45 heading to 50 swag. It's still swag. Don't get me wrong. We don't got to bring sexy back or nothing like that. It's still here. It's just a little dusty. It's just, it's just a little dusty. You know what I'm saying? It's not shining like it used to shine. That's all I'm saying. It's still there. It's just not as shiny as it used to be. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so we're having these uh, we're having these conversations in groups of Black women, and we're talking about what is it what does it mean to look good and feel good in your forties? Because our forties they're not your mama's forties. Like I don't know about you, but when I was growing up. So I made my mom a grandmother at 45. I think I was uh, I was 23, so 43. Oh no. She was a uh, 42, like 42, 43 when I made her a grandmother. I'm 45, I might be 46. My son hasn't made me a grandmother. But I, I understand what Jay-Z said about 30s, uh, 30s the new 20. I feel that way about 45. Like 45 is the new 35. I do not feel or act or live my life like a grandma or um what I thought 45 was going to be like. 
Am I by myself? Do, does anybody else have that? Like, do you still feel vibrant and young? Like you, not like you belong to the streets, but like you could still get out here and shake a tail feather if you wanted to. Drop it like it's hot, lukewarm, medium, you know, something. And because we're living in a different time and a different age, the social media world, a lot of this, how we are, who we're supposed to be, how we live, it's like jumbly. It's weird, right? You have these social media personalities calling you a leftover when you you're still trying to be a snack. <laughs> you still you still feel like you're a snack. You know what I'm saying? Like a leftover. Boy, I'm still I'm still a snack. Like don't drip. Um, you still want to dress fly? You know what I'm saying? I can still wear heels. I'm still out here wearing my heels. So I, I, the look good and the feel good, it doesn't leave you as you mature. It doesn't leave you as you season. You just have to do it a little bit differently. And here's the, here's the best part. Here's the best part. When you're in a room full of the right type of women, the right type of black women, we're having these conversations, but it's not just having the conversations. We can big up another sis. We can be like, girl, what are you talking about? You look beautiful. You got it going on. And what I have found out is a lot of black women are feeling by themselves. Like a lot of black women right now feel like they are the only woman who's going through the issues, the trials, the tribulations, the stresses, the situations that they're dealing with and going through. And they feel like they're doing it by themselves. Excuse me. I cannot tell you how many conversations I'm having right now with women who are just, you know, not, not crying on my shoulder, but just kind of saying what they're dealing with and going through. And they're like, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm the only person. I'm like, you are not the only person. Girl, I wear a dress. Girl, I'm dealing with this. Girl, I got this going on. Girl, they're, they're like, well, you, you don't look like it. Ooh, thank you that we don't look like what we've been through. Thank you. Drop a thank you in the comments if you don't look like what you've been through. Thank you. For, 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 for whatever reason. Black, call it black, don't crack if you want to. Call it. God is good. Call it. You, you made it to the other side. Doesn't matter what it is. You don't look like what you've been through. I, I If I told y'all my life story, okay? If I told you my life story, to be 45 heading to 46 in my right mind, depending on who you ask. I say my right mind, but you know, my mom should be like, girl, you ain't right. <laughs> But I, you know what I'm saying. To be here, where we are, we made it. And so there's there's the there there's these conversations around feeling good and looking good that black women are having that all black women are not sitting at the table to receive, but they should, because you're not experiencing what you're experiencing by yourself. You're not the only one who still want they swag to be right. You're not the only one that still want to be on fleek. You're not the only one that still want to look good, feel good, dress nice, travel. You're not. But if you don't surround yourself with the right women, having the right conversation, you will feel alone. Oh, Miss uh, Liv said, we are enough. We are more than enough. At any age, at every shade, with zero kids to, to ever have many you have, single, married, employed, unemployed, short, tall, thick, thin, long hair, short hair, natural hair, not your hair. It does not matter. We are the shit. We were magical before people called us magical. We were magical when they put us on that ship and brought us to America and our great, 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 grandmama put that work in. That's when we were magical. 
then. Not last year, two years, three years, 10, not, not 10. We didn't just get magical. Lucky Charms didn't find us and bedazzle us and be like, y'all is lucky, y'all magical. That's, that's not how it happened. We've been magical. We was born in magic. We were born in royalty. We forget that. We forget that. We forget that as we live our lives. We forget that when we show up to the employer and they act crazy with us. We forget that when we put in twice as much work for half as much recognition. We forget that. We forget that we should wake up every day and feel good because every day we look good. We forget. Crown Nubian says, sister, your hair is on fleek. Thank you. First, thank you. Um, I tried my first flat twist out. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Your uh your 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 uh symbol is on fleek. I love that. Look at those lips. Hmm. Crown Nubian says, reason why we feel like we are fighting this alone. Why do we feel? Oh, I'm gonna tell you why we feel like we're fighting it alone. We feel like we are fighting it alone because we don't get into the right rooms with the right black women having the conversation. I'm gonna say that again. We don't get into the right rooms with the right black women having the right conversations. And so if, you've, if you're feeling like you're dealing with this by yourself or you feel like you're the only person, sometimes you'll look around at the other women around you and one of a couple of things can happen. You may feel like this in particular, you know, these women are further than you, so they don't get it. They don't understand. Or you may feel like the women that you hang out with, they're not where you are in life. And so they don't understand. Or you may not be surrounded by black women. If you're in corporate America, you're the only black woman sitting at the table. You really, you definitely feel like these other people don't understand. Like how we operate and live a lot of times Unfortunately, it's like we're in a halo and we have to, we're operating in this, this silo that makes us feel like we're by ourselves. Like we're the only person who's dealing with it and going through it. That's what I think. What you think? What y'all think? Uh, Liv says exactly 100% facts. Sometimes you're the only one at the table. Sometimes you're the only one at the conference. Sometimes you're the only one that's pulling up. Also, you have to be around people who you feel comfortable with to be that vulnerable because it, it's it's a it's vulnerability that allows us to be open and share that because society says we're these we're strong black women and if you're that strong you can't you can't be you can't say you need help you can't talk about that you can't Say you don't feel good. You, you strong. You a strong girl. Fuck up. You strong black woman. You better be out here in these streets representing. So you have to be around people that you feel like, you know what? I ain't got it today, sis. Or you should need to be around someone who you can say, you know what? I ain't got it today, sis. So that she can come around and be like, girl, fix your crown. I got you. You want to borrow my crown? What do you need? How can I help you? You don't feel good today? What can I do? You don't feel like you look good today? Well, let's go shopping. Let's grab some lunch. Do you have do I have something I can help you with? Like you have to, you know what I'm saying? Be in those rooms. And it's important, right? And so let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh I have definitely, let's see. Uh she's I have definitely experienced that isolation. Kevin says, you're talking about walking a razor's edge. Man, it's the truth. Liv says, vulnerability is a superpower, not a weakness. Yes, it really is. Kiana says, let's exchange strong for power. Kiana, 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 come on, listen. You selling for me. I ain't even got to the pitch yet. She said, let's exchange strong for powerful Black women. Listen, I said this when I started the conversation, okay? I said it. I don't even know if you was on yet. I am doing my lives each week 
I'm breaking down the conversations that we're going to be having at the Black Power Lifestyle Retreat. So every uh, night leading up to the Black Power Retreat, I'm going to come live and I'm going to talk about one of the conversations that we're going to have, right? Now, the conversations that we're going to have, they are um, panel conversations. So it's not just me. Right now, I'm just giving you my thought process for how I came up with the conversation. So I'm telling you guys the conversations based on how I think and how I put these conversations together. But that is literally, just so y'all know, I, I'm telling the truth. Check me out. Check this out. This is the Black Power Lifestyle Retreat. Okay. So this is a virtual retreat. It's happening online Saturday and Sunday. I have 26, count them, 26 Black women that are going to be joining me for conversations and resolutions. Look at these topics. She, uh, what, what, what is it? She, Kiana. Day one, mind, body, and soul. Look at that. Look good, feel good. How to present the best you. So that's our topic tonight. Again, I'm breaking down every topic until we get here. We're going to have a conversation about around a balanced life, how to have it all and not crumble because Black women, we are pursuing it all and it's heavy. And again, you're not the only one. Oh my God, if I can get Black women to understand you're not the only one, you got to get in the right room so that you know what you're doing is good, it's right, and you're not by yourself. We're going to talk about alpha femininity, the myth of the strong Black woman. We're going to talk about mastering your mindset, transforming your relationship with you. And we're going to talk about in the uh, imposter syndrome, the silent killer of dreams. Yo, let me tell you, I cannot tell you enough how many Black women are rocking around with imposter syndrome. Not that you gave it to yourself, not that you put it on you, but you're not by yourself. And so we're going to talk about how to recognize it, but more importantly, how to get rid of that shit part of my language, but we got to get rid of that because you're amazing. You're brilliant. You're beautiful. You, 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 when you walk into a room, the room lights up. So we got to get you out of feeling like, <clears throat> should you, could you, can you apply for this job? Should you apply for this job? Should you ask for this much money? Are you doing it right? We're going to get, we're going to, we're going to break that mentality next weekend. On day two, we're going to talk about your money. Cause I think if you, if you, once you get your mindset right, your pocketbook should be right too, right? So we're going to talk about conquering the corporate ladder, how to move up and secure the bag. This is whether you are, have a corporate job or you're an entrepreneur. I'm going to specifically talking to employees on how to think about yourself as a CEO. I have an ideology around that that I'm going to be sharing. We're going to talk about mastering the world of credit, how to join the 700 Club, and if you're already there, how to leverage its power. So we're going to talk about that, how to use that to build a bulletproof wealth portfolio so you can stack your FU money. So if you are a black woman and you are not, you do not know about, and you're interested in crypto, real estate, getting into cannabis, stocks, or entrepreneurship, that's going to be a dope conversation. We're going to be talking about protecting your financial assets so that you can preserve your, preserve your family's future and legacy. So we're going to be talking about life insurance, financial planning, estate planning, retirement planning. And then we're going to end it with identifying your money scripts. And if you were with me when I started this conversation, that was what I talked about last night, because oftentimes people, one, if you don't know what your money script is, we're going to help you to identify it. There's four. But two, when we talk about the relationship with money, oftentimes people think that your relationship with money only has to do with budgeting and savings. And it doesn't. It's bigger than that. Your relationship with money has to do with what you feel you should get paid at your job. If you're an employee, it has to do with how you negotiate your pay. If you're an entrepreneur, it has to do with how you set your prices. Like your money script is bigger than just savings and budget. It impacts all areas of financial wealth and growth in your life. And so even if I was able to give you $250,000, if you don't know what your money script is, you could, you, you could potentially, I'm not going to say you will, but you could potentially um, not utilize that or leverage it the proper way. So we're going to be talking about that. So Kiana, did, literally, she, look it, says, I already, I'm, I'm doing it. She said, let's exchange strong for powerful Black women. Look it, Black pal her. I'm already doing it, girl. I'm already, we own it. We own it, we own it. I'm already there. I'm with you. Um, 
So it's going to be a weekend where we get to relax, relate, release. Relax, relate, release. That's one of my favorite little things. Relax, relate, release. Uh, so that's so, so we'll be doing that. Oopsie, I lost you guys. Where'd you guys go? There we go. Boom. I love that Debbie Allen clip right there. Um, if you guys haven't heard of the level 10 wheel of life chart, or if you haven't heard of the, uh, the level 10 life, I'm going to be taking you guys through that. You're going to get investment tracking sheets, estate planning workbook, just a whole bunch of stuff, the pro model, all the conversations and stuff that black women need to have so that we know we're not alone. We're not by ourselves. We're not the only person who's dealing with life. You're not the only person who's going through it. There's other women who look good who are not feeling up to par and you need to be in that room with, with them. So with us, not them, with us, us, so that we can sharpen each other's iron. Um, and because I just love being a black woman and I like supporting black women, I reached out to a couple of different black women to get some sponsorships. And instead of getting financial sponsors, I got giveaways. So we have, as of right now, almost $2,000 worth of cash and prizes that we're going to be giving away. I have one male um, sponsor, Benson, Marcel Benson at Benson Watch Company. He's actually going to be um, sponsoring. He's sponsoring a watch. He's sponsoring uh, one of these bangles. Um, my girlfriend, Teddy Ewing, she's giving away one of her crypto, uh, how to invest in crypto with confidence. Um Mary, she's a speaker. She's going. She's giving. She's giving away a slay down lesson. So if you're somebody who wants to, you know, get your beauty right and you've been struggling with your eyebrows or something, we have a, a full on slay down session with you. It's a one on one session. We have a twenty five dollars of Black Girl Wines. We have the I Am Enough shirt. I forget who said it, but we got that. We have all different kinds of stuff. Literally journals and and courses and makeup and I mean all different kinds of cool stuff just to empower Black women. So um, check it out. Please check it out. I'm going to remove that for right now. I'm going to take this comment down and I'm going to put this banner up. Um, if you go to www.theblackpowerretreat.com, theblackpowerretreat.com right now, you can say 35%. So uh, we set this up so that it's super economical. $99. $99. $99. $99 for like day of entry. It's virtual. It's online. Um, $199 if you want to be VIP. $299 if you want super VIP. But I, I created it so that any Black woman can be in this room having these conversations. I put my time and energy into thinking about this. Like, what are the conversations that women keep coming to me and having? Where, where, where are we struggling? Why aren't we getting to this next level? What are the scripts that we're having? What are we saying to ourselves? Why are we feeling alone? Um, and so I, I, I created this lifestyle retreat so that we can literally style our lives together. Eric says, let's see, you're leftovers because you don't have a man or children to create a household for. So let's, let's dissect that. You're a leftover because you don't have a man or children to create a household for. So literally the definition of leftover is having something and there's something that's remaining, right? So you can't be a leftover if you don't, if you've never had anything because you have to have something that's left over. So that, that's the first piece, like that analogy is completely wrong. Second, I think it says you don't have a man or children to create a household for. Well, I actually do have a child. Well, he's not a child anymore. I have a son. He's 22. And I create a household for him. That whole analogy about being over 35 and a leftover is so ridiculous. And whoever believes it oh, says so much about those individuals. Because again, I cannot tell you how many people, how many women I see over 35 who are getting wifed up, booed up, married by black men, good black men, right? Um, and so I, well, number one, I don't think black women are leftovers, but here's the thing. We're going to have that conversation too. We're going to have that conversation. I didn't, I did not put it on the agenda in that manner. I don't, I, I didn't want to ride on Kevin's um, coattail. So it, it doesn't say high value. We're not having that conversation. 
Um, I didn't want to do anything to be disrespectful to his passing. So I didn't put any of that terminology or that verbiage in there. But we're going to have those conversations about high values. We're going to have that conversation about being left over. Um, and I, I, I need, I want Black women to hear me very clearly when I, when I speak about those things. I have a panel of women who I hand selected for this conversation. Ranging from a younger girl, um, uh, Keisha is probably, Keisha's 30. Uh, she just got engaged. She met her boo at All Black National Convention in November, in October, and they were engaged in February. So we're gonna talk about when, when a man finds a good thing, what, how he wipes that. So she's gonna be on that panel. Um, Dr. Alicia Watkins is gonna be on that panel because I wanted to have a psychological perspective. <laughs> I'm gonna be in that panel. I'm 45. I'm not married, but I want to talk about it. So we're gonna. When I tell y'all, we about to we about to deep dive into some stuff that women need to talk about, um, because we need to know that we have each other's back. We need to know that we're not by ourselves. We need to know that we're not left over. You need to know that being strong is not a death sentence. It's not. Um, sometimes I feel like black women get penalized for being strong, but you didn't ask to be strong. You. You, you got put in that situation and predicament and then you womaned up. Um, and so you shouldn't be penalized for that, right? So we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going to go deep. You're going to leave next weekend flying, transformed, on fire. You're going to feel good. We're going to talk about feel good, look good. So the feel good, look good panel specifically I have um, a celebrity fashion stylist that's going to come and talk about uh, the look good part, right? How do you, so uh, my girlfriend, Kim, she is, I'm not going to tell her age, but she's older than me. That's what we'll say. She's older than me. And this chick stay looking good. Matter of fact, let me see. I'll show y'all her page. Hold on. Add to the stream. She stay looking good. She's older than me and she cleans up nicely. She cleans up nicely. So she is older than I am, but she does really good at looking good. Like I was like, women still want to know how can I be closer to 50 and still look good? How do I still pull these things off? So she's going to come and talk to us about, you know, how to dress and still look good and feel good at a certain age. Um, Cheryl Jones, I'm not sure if you guys know who she is, but she is the founder of Rhythm Rumble. She travels the country doing the stick workouts. And it's like these stick, these African workouts that you do with sticks. So she's going to come and talk about, um, you know, how to work out after a certain age and, and, and what that's like. And, and uh, you know, just, just man, we're going to have a good time. That's what I know. I know we're going to have a good time. That's what I know. So if you uh, if you could get in the building, I, I highly suggest that you come and get in the building. It's one thing to have these conversations on, on Facebook and YouTube and get, you know, 20 minutes of one direction conversation. It's another to be in a room with 300 black women chit chatting in the comments, giving each other big ups, talking about you not by yourself. That's me. I had that experience. Let me tell you what I did. Call me. Let me give you my number. People collaborate, networking and connecting across the country. There is nothing like it. There is nothing like it. And I love that I get to create these opportunities for Black women. Like, it's why I wake up every day, literally, to challenge the stereotype. You're not going to talk crazy about Black women on my watch because I'm going to create opportunities for us to get in the room and empower each other and let each other know you're not by yourself. This happened to her. Hey, uh, come here. Tell her what you did. Tell her how you Tell her what you did. Tell her how you got that out of that, how you fixed it. But you got to be in the room. You got to be in the room. You got to be in the room. Okay, let me come back up here. Let me come back up here. Um, let's see. Hello, Tracy. Hey, Sandra. Sandra says, I found you by accident, but love this conversation. Nothing is by accident, sis. You did not find me by accident. I'm here ordained to be here so that we can face each other and meet. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Um, let's see. Yes, www.theblackpowerretreat.com. Come out, come out. 
Let's see, Cynthia, thank you. You're so welcome. Kiana said, wow, look at you. You, I don't even know Kiana. I don't know Kiana. Kiana literally just spoke. We need to go from strong to powerful. And it was there. That's how you know when something is supposed to be. That's how you know when you're in the right room. That's how you know when you're aligned with the right women. It just works. She didn't know. I don't even know if she knows who I am. She didn't know. She just knew that we got to get away from strong and start focusing on the power of her, uh, on what's inside of us and who we are and building our tribe, being around like-minded women. That's all she knew. She spoke it and boom, it was there. Thank you, Kiana. That was a perfect setup. It's like we've been playing ball all our lives. Um, let's see. Liv says, yes, know your money script. Your money script is super important. It's not, it's not just how you spend money, but also how you make money, how you think about money, what the the money that you feel like you're worth, how you call money to you, how you attract money to you, how you attract wealth to you. It's excuse me, it's bigger than just budgeting and savings. There, there's more to your money script than just how you um than how you think about money. There's actually a relationship. I'm gonna put this down so I can do a really quick um shameless plug. Hold on, hold on, look. My shameless plug. I'm gonna drink from my black power mug because my shameless plug. I got all kind of black power merch around here. But anyways, that was just my little shameless plug. What I'm going to do is I am going to, can I run this as a ticker? Yeah, save. Show it. Boom. I'm going to run that as a ticker. Okay, boom. So let me get back to the comments. Um, We need a t-shirt with this line, powerful black women. Live. Y'all, y'all, do you think, do you think I would come up with the concept of Black Pal Her and not then support it with the shirt? Come on, Liv. You don't, I know you don't know me yet, but I'm a Virgo. So just, just check it out. So on this page, you see right here where it says the store. I know you don't know me, Liv, but trust me when I tell you when I do something, I promise you I do it right. Black Power, backpack, Black Power, uh tote bag, water bottle, uh, what is this? Uh, the laptop, I got the shirts, I got the the notepad, I got the mugs, the cups, the mouse. I got a girl, I know you don't know me, but when I tell you I have black women at heart, at my mind, I promise you, and I don't do you wrong, I don't do you dirty, I'm gonna give you quality. So we have the t-shirts as well. We got it all, whatever you need, I got you, girl. <laughs> so they say you're right Kimberly says a strong black woman is when living in these days and times some women are living off on their base income but never ever use other people's information don't think you better than the other uplifting each other I like that sisterhood is important sisterhood is important it really is you don't have to do it by yourself nor should you I don't know why. Listen, I live in Arizona. So I want you guys to tell me. Okay. I live in Arizona. So you guys tell me if this happens where you live. Here in Arizona, you can walk down the street heading towards another black person, man or woman, and they'll look away. They won't speak. They won't say hi. They won't smile. Nothing. Like, it's like a running joke for me now. If I see somebody this black head in my way, I'm making eye contact. Like, like you gonna look me in the eye. <laughs> and when I get up on them, I'm like, hey, how are you? Freaks them out. Freaks them out. Look, good? I'm like, yeah, I'm glad. I hope you have a good day. Freaks them out. Like, I speaks to black people when I see them. Like, mm-mm. And if you need something and I got it, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just got to get back to sisterhood. We got to get back to. And I will tell you this because I've been challenged on this before. I've been challenged. If black people need this, if black women need this, why do you charge for it? If you, if you, if you say you support black people, you support black women, how come you charge for your events? How come it costs money to be in the room? Because everybody can't be in the room. I only want the people in the room who I know want to be in the room. I have to protect the energy. I have to protect the women. I have to protect the conversation. 
if people really wanted this information, everybody would have it, but they don't. And so in order to guarantee the serenity, the peace, the like-mindedness, the proper sisterhood, the quality, you got to put a price tag on it. It's not a high price tag. Like, I'm going to, this is not a boasting. This is not a gloating. I just want you to understand that there's levels to this. That's all. That's the only reason I'm going to tell you this. I'm in a $10,000 program. And the, the young lady whose program I'm in, she's in a $50,000 program. There's levels to this. Like, it's not just one room. There's all these different rooms. Um, but when you want to get into certain types of rooms to have certain kind of conversations, you do have to pay for it. But I don't think you should be hit, hit over the head to get into the room for a conversation. No. But I do think that the conversations in the rooms have to be protected. Jewel says, me too. Love my blackness. Liv says, I love it. Uh, Liv says, we can still be highly valued, not by any man's standards, but how we value ourselves. Absolutely. Like you, you listen, you are the first person to value you outside of God and your parents. You are, you are the highest estimation of value. And I'm going to share my story um, when we get to the Black Power Lifestyle Retreat, but I would have to tell you that at 46, the first 30 years of my life were in low esteem, low esteem and low value. Definitely the first 30. And then the next 10, I was trying to figure it out. So like 30, 30 to 40, I was figuring it out. And 40 to 46, man, baby, we out here doing it. I'm doing it. I, I flunked at a ninth grade. I flunked at a ninth grade. I'm about to have my PhD in like six months. Flunked at a ninth grade. And then just spiraled. Brrr, just didn't think I was worthy. Didn't think I had it together. Didn't think I knew what I was doing. I became a dancer. I was a stripper from 19 to 23. I became a single mom at 24. Like I was just, I felt like I didn't have no value. I didn't have nothing to offer my, the, the life or the world or myself for that matter. And so I just let life take me by the hand and just do whatever it wanted to do with me, toss me to and fro. And then one day I was in the right room, baby. I was in the right room with the right people having the right conversation. And they just spoke some life over me. Change my thought, my ideations, my thought process, transformation, my mindset, my relationship with me, whatever you want to call it. Before I know it, my bachelor's is done, my MBA is done, and my PhD program. I have a house, I have three businesses, and make six figures. Like just, pfft. and now I get to turn around and do it for other Black women. It's the, one of the most surreal things in the whole wide world. Uh, let's see. Tracy answered, this is a movement. It is. It's, I, I call it the Black Power Her movement. Um, we have these Black Power conversations. They don't all cost. And once you're in, so if you, if you, if you went to the Black Power Her business retreat, um, I'm sorry, if you went to the Black Power Her business conference, check your email. Once you are in, once you've actually host, come to an event, you are, we don't have membership. Like it's not, a, you know, there's no membership, if you will. But once you actually have joined and you join the black power Her circle then you do get you know specials and promos and stuff like that i do private stuff for you guys um i answer y'all's questions we talk shop we talk business i'm actually getting ready to do a, a black uh black a black power Her mastermind where i'm going to take the ladies through merchandising so that i can help them get ready for uh, black friday so any of the women who have businesses or want to start a business from the perspective of merchandise and our products we're doing a four month mastermind to help them get their products and or their merchandise ready so that they can make money through the holidays. So I do I do stuff like that, too. Right. So um, it is it's a movement, but it's, it's a movement to, to get the right type of women together. I'm trying to create a legion of women that I want to live the rest of my life with, like that I can travel with, that I can talk with, that we can read books together. Like I, I'm trying to create this tribe of dope, black, powerful women that don't trip that aren't competitive, that share information, that support each other, that want to see each other win for real. You know what I'm saying? Like like in real life. And so that's really what this Black Power movement is all about. 
Um, Liv says, take emotions out of business. Yes, this is a movement. Yo, Queenie, my Sheeny, what's up? What's up? Oh, somebody crazy is in here. Okay. Um, congrats on the PhD. Thank you so much. It is, um, I was 12. I was 12 years old when I got the idea and the concept to become a doctor. Um, I was 12. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to go to Spelman. I wanted to be AKA. From the age of 12, I knew I love Black people. Like from the age of 12, I knew I wanted to be in a Black sorority. I knew I wanted to go to a Black HBCU. And I wanted to be a doctor. But I thought that it was um, like the medical crime. And then I was like, oh, I don't like blood. I don't, I don't. I, that was the thing I was Then I was like, I don't like kids. And I was like, I, I don't like blood. Then I was like a general practitioner. And I was like, Ugh. and then when I flunked out of ninth grade, I was like, well, hell, I guess I'm not going to be a doctor. Like, my life is over. Like, I'm not going to be a doctor. And then when I started dancing, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm really done for. I, I'm, I'm not going to be nothing. I'm a stereotype. Then I became a single mom. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't need Tim Samus to tell me that I wasn't shit because I felt like it. Like I didn't do nothing with my life. It was over. It's a wrap. Um, but look, God is for you who can be against you. Here I am, 46. What is that? 34 years later? 34 years later. Published a published author. I have three businesses. Um, I'm going to be a doctor, not an MD, but a PhD. Um, I travel the country speaking. I work for myself. I've raised my son. Like I could not have seen this life for myself. I couldn't have dreamt it this way. I couldn't have pinned it. I couldn't have, I couldn't have done this. Like I couldn't have by myself if it wasn't for just beautiful black women that have been around me, giving me a hand up, speaking a word. Like your tribe is super important. Who you surround yourself with, the conversation that you have, what they speak into you, it's super important. It matters. It matters. Um, love that. I tell people I started growing up when I was 30. The growth mindset is real. It's super real. It's super real. Let me get rid of this dude right here real fast. Thank you. Um, Jay and Jay say, what date is the retreat? So the retreat is this next coming Saturday and Sunday. So June 11th and June 12th. It is a virtual retreat. It will be online. Okay. So you get to enjoy it from the comfort of your own home. If you cannot join us live, you can watch the replay. So even if you can't join us live, you can watch the replay. Um, some of the most important parties that you get to join the Black Power Herd. The girls, the ladies, they like to call it the sister circle, right? So they call it the Black Power Sister Circle. I call it the Black Power Circle, but it is really a sister circle. Uh, so you get to join the sister circle. And so even though you may not be able to watch it live, uh, what they did last time with the business conference is the ladies who couldn't be, watch the business conference, who couldn't uh, participate live, they all got together and did a showing. So they watched the replay together. Look, see what I'm talking about? Togetherness, right? They got together and watched the replay as a group. So it was like they were watching it live because they were all together. So even if you can't watch it live or join us next Saturday and Sunday, um, you can watch the replay and maybe get a group together of other people to watch it with you. But it's next Saturday and Sunday. Um, it's via Zoom. Uh, when I did the Black Power Business Conference, we picked a virtual location. So we were in Dubai, virtually, you know what I'm saying? We were all virtually zoomed to Dubai and I showed them the hotel and whatnot that we were in. And so I'm still trying to figure out where we're virtually going for the retreat. But right now I think we're going to Tulum. Um, so far, I think we're going to be in Tulum, but I'm neither going to confirm or deny that right now. Um, love the concept. Thank you, True Abundance. Thank you. I love, uh, um, what is that? A, a different world. And that, you know, that, and, you know, that, that episode with Whitley on the table with the uh, relax, relate, release. It's one of my favorite episodes. And so I had to incorporate that. Like we're going to get together 
We're going to relax because we deserve it. We're going to relate because we are in a room full of other black women and we're going to release because there's some shit we got to let go so we can get to this next level. Um, and we're going to do that through a retreat. A retreat is a time away in a quiet and secluded place where you can relax. And so um, I'm telling all the women, you know, be where you want to be. Wear what you want to wear. You can be in your pajamas through these days. You can be in island attire if you want to. You can be in your robe, like whatever helps you to relax and just be present and take this moment and this time for you. Um, I, I wholeheartedly feel that even as... So as business owners, entrepreneurs, or career women, we don't take enough time for ourselves. Like we, we, we hustle and we grind for our career. We hustle and we grind for our business, but then we don't take a minute to just sit back and, and, and focus on us. And when I'm coaching or when I'm teaching or I'm talking to my clients, I'm going to be, I'm going to be 100 with you. A lot of the issues that I come across when I'm coaching my clients, it's life. When we talk about why their business isn't doing good, it's life. We talk about why they're not getting as far in their careers they want to. It's life. Mindset, habits, disciplines, behaviors, it's life. But we'll invest in our business, but not our life. And so that's why it was important for me to follow up the business conference with this lifestyle retreat, because I need, I really want to help Black women to style their life. Style a life where you don't have to be overwhelmed, stressed out. Um, where you can focus on your career and your business and get the results that you want because you've put some time and energy and effort into your life and into yourself because that's important. Let's see. Liv says, yeah, we need to build that community. Black Pine says, yes, need to be in. Come on, girl, come through, come through. You are invited to, to a seat at the table. <laughs> Um, girl, I hope I get a ticket. Please do get a ticket, J and J. Please do get a ticket. Like I, I encourage you guys to come through. Pull up. That's what Rihanna said. Pull up. Woo woo. Um, hey Regina, she said it was nice. Dubai is beautiful. Yes, Dubai is. So I will tell you guys this. Um, it was our first inaugural Black. How her business conference, and we already said our five year anniversary is going to be in Dubai. So we definitely know we're going to be doing the Black Power Business Conference for five years because our five year um, anniversary, we are going to Dubai. Like we are literally going to Dubai for the five year Black Power Business Conference. And so wherever I pick for the first annual Black Power Lifestyle Retreat, that's where we'll be going for the five years. So I gotta, I'm trying to make sure I pick someplace dope. Because that's where we'll go to celebrate our five year as a group of Black women, wherever it is. I'll be out there styling and profiling. Um, Tamika says, love the imaginative aspect of that virtual retreat. You know what? Here's the thing. I understand. I'm not mad for people who aren't ready to travel yet. Excuse me. And I don't feel or think that just because you're not ready to travel that we still can't have a good time. So I think a virtual retreat is like the best, is the next best, is the next best thing. Um, we still get to gather. We still get to be in a room. You still get that engagement. I have 26 women, Black women, that will be speaking, stepping on the stage. From realtors to nurse practitioners to investors, celebrity stylists, couples coach. We're talking about Black love. Um, the wealth doula. This is my client right here. Her tagline is, I make your money have babies. I'd be like, come on now, make these, make this money have babies. So she talks about credit. We have a makeup artist. We have a naturopathic physician. We have estate planning and probate attorney, um, money mindset coach. Teddy talks about crypto. Um, this is my girlfriend, Lanika Johnson. She's the CEO of Trash Logic. She has a multi million dollar trash company. She's going to be talking about how to climb the corporate ladder. We have Simone Casson. She does cash and on in cannabis. So she teaches black women how to get into the cannabis game from an investing standpoint. Man, I mean, I, I would. I tell y'all, I hand selected, hand picked. This is Cheryl. This is the one I was telling you guys about that does fitness. She does rhythm rumble. She travels all over the country, the world, teaching this African art of, of weight loss. Like it's going to, man, it's going to be amazing. Blow your mind. Um, yep, got my passport ready. We're going to be, yeah, we out of here. We, we, out, we definitely out of here. We out of here in five years. We're going to be in Dubai. And then uh, again, I'm not sure where we're going for our virtual retreat, but it's going to be someplace tropical. We're going to be someplace with the beach. It's going to be nice. It's going to be dope. Um, 
So, okay. I know it's Friday night. I know y'all, we're coming up on the hour. I don't want to keep you from your honeys or your date nights or your happy hour, whatever it is you got to do tonight. So I don't want to keep y'all. I do want to say thank you so much for rocking with me tonight. I do want to say thank you for tuning into this conversation, which I think is super important about looking good and feeling good and living your best life. Um, I think we need to have that conversation. I think that there's too many Black women who just, we're looking good, but we're not feeling good. And I want you to be both. I want you to look, I want you to feel as good on the inside as you look on the outside. And we're going to talk about how to make both of those match up so that you can be, so that you can live in purpose every day, so that you can be passionate every day. We're going to help you to get connected with the community so that you always have Black women that you can lean on, lean into, get the support that you need, um, the encouragement, the empowerment that you need. Um, and so I'm lit. Like, I'm excited. Like, I can't. I don't know what else to tell you. Like, I, 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 fire. It's about to be fire. I'm excited. So, again, every night this week, I will be doing some type of a conversation. So, every single night leading up to the actual um, uh, retreat, I am going to go live and just kind of dig into each one of the topics. Because if you're really not sure, like, I don't know, should I do I, do I want to go? Should I go? Do I need to be in the room? You might not you might not know what we're talking about. So every night I pick one of these topics and then I come and talk about why I feel it's important that black women have these conversations. And that way you can be like, oh yeah, you know what? I do have that. Oh, I am dealing with that. Oh, dang, that's that that's exactly what I need. So I'm giving you the input, I'm giving you why I chose these topics. And when we actually get to the retreat, when we get with the panel, we're going to break them apart and offer resolution. I do not, I do not like to pay for something and show up for it so you can tell me what my problem is. I already know what the problem is. That's why I paid my money and I showed up. If you're not going to tell me how to deal with this, give me my money back. Hmm. How about that? So when I put conferences together, when I put retreats together, when I put anything together, it is because I want some resolve. I want you to leave and I want you to be transformed. I want you to leave and I want you to have an answer. I want you to leave and I want you to be like, okay, now I know what to do. I want you to leave and I want you to have a, a, a tribe. I want you to have support. I want you to feel like, okay, this next six months of this year, I got it. I'm refreshed. I'm rejuvenated. I relaxed. I related. I released. I'm ready to go. That's how, that's, that's how I put these together. I specifically put these together for an outcome. Matter of fact, I start with the outcome. This is what I want them to walk away with. This is what I want them to get. What do I have to put together in order for them to walk away with this? So I start with the outcome, with the result, and then I build what I want based on that. So fire. That's all I can tell you. It's going to be fire. You're going to wish you was in the room. <laughs> Tamika says, I will be sharing. We need this empowerment. Yes, we do. We do. We do. We do. Uh, Liv says, this was uh, answered prayers, and I'm glad this isn't in alignment with my goals this year. Thank you, sis. Thank you so much. And let me tell you all something else. I'm going to um, tell you guys when you get there, but if people who already know me, they know this. Uh, once you come to one of my events or you show up or you pay for something with me, we go together. Like, I am yours and you are mine. We friends, we homies, like we not breaking up. It's us, it's us's. So just know once you get in my circle, it's very hard to get out because now we go together. <laughs> we friends, okay, in real life, just know that. So make sure you, before you step into the circle that you know that we about to be, we about to kick it. If you don't want to kick it, do not sit at my table because I take it personal, like we, we, we know each other. If you sit at my table, we know each other. I will call you. Uh, I just called and checked in somebody. She's in my five-star fast track. She ain't showed up for the last two Saturdays. I called. I was like, yo, what's going on with you? She was like, Lene? I was like, yeah. She was like, how do you get my number? I was like, when you signed up. She was like, no, I've been traveling. I had some stuff going on, but I can't believe you called me. I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to pull up. Like, is, is everything good? So once you sit at my table, just make sure you you doing it and you know that you get me. You get all of me. Okay. So, you know, exactly. Liv said, we family now. Exactly. We family now. We, we, mm. you, once you get in the circle, we family now. So just make sure you cool. We're getting a family because that's how we rocks and rolls. 
Like when we show up, we, we if somebody posts something in the group, somebody's gonna you gonna get some love. This is what I think. This is what I I listen. I had somebody in the group create a whole logo for somebody. Like just was like that logo's not that great. How about I help you? And then what, proceeded to create a logo for them and didn't even charge them. Like that's what I'm talking about. Like sometimes people got it, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they can't. I mean, like you just you just gotta love on the community. You just gotta love on us. Like you just gotta be there. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole purpose. I'll, I'm gonna tell you guys this, and I'm gonna let you go. I say this all the time. If you follow me, you already know. And if you're just starting to follow me, you'll hear me say this all the time. When I get to my top, if I look around and I'm the only person who's there, I did it wrong. When you get to the top, if you're the only person standing at the top of that mountain, if you're the only person who's successful, if you're the only person who's making six figures, if you're the only person with the black car, if you're the only person with the house, if you're the only person driving that dope car, you didn't do it right. If you're the only person in your whole clique that got to be successful and nobody else got put on, you didn't do it right. That's my cent. That's, that's, that's my two cents. So everything I do, if I know it, if I can help, if I can guide, I'm going to give it to you. Like, I'm going to tell it to you. I do charge. I'm a business owner. I have to. But I'm not going to hit you over the head. I ain't going to do that. And I'm not going to nickel and dime you either. Okay? So that's what it is. Uh, True said, okay. Like, that's legit. Like, when I get, to, when we get to the top, I want us all to be like, who got it? And everybody throw their card down, like, ah, we all got it. <laughs> it's like, they can just pick which one they want. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, yes, Tracy said, winning together. Exactly. Like, that's the goal. Winning together. That is the goal. That's the goal. Winning together. That's literally the goal. And it can be done. I see it, I see it happen in other communities all the time. We could do it in our community. And we still young and fly. Like 45 is still fly. Like we still out here taking pole vacations and stuff. Like we still fly. There's still a lot of life to live. There's still a lot of winning that still needs to happen and take place. Like we ain't even done. I feel like I haven't even gotten started. I feel like, I, I feel like I'm literally like just at the beginning. And I, and I have to remind myself not to, um, not to, play my success is small. I have to remind myself that I have come a long way. I have done some great things. I have to remind myself of that because I'm 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 always looking forward. I'm always looking like to the next thing. You know, black women, we always like, I need more. I gotta get to it. I'm all I do that. I'm very goal focused. I'm a Virgo. So I'm always like gotta get to, 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 to it. But um I do recognize and know that you know I've done a lot, but I still just feel like so empowered. Like there's still so much work that needs to get done. There's still dreams and goals and aspirations and travel. And there's just still so much that has to get done. And I just want to make sure that I build up this group, this movement of Black women that also want to get these things done. So on that note, I'm going to leave you beautiful, melanated women to your night. Go out, enjoy uh, this evening, whether you are with, with yourself or you are with your loved ones or your children or your happy hour or wherever you are, whatever you are doing. And enjoy this time. Uh, let me stop scrolling. Uh, of this evening, be blessed. Thank you. Humbly thank you so much for tuning in to hang out with me for this time tonight. Please go follow me. If you do not follow me already, if you do not know me, you don't follow me, check me out either on Instagram. You can follow me at my name right there, Lene Javette. Um, I'm going to put my handle, I think I could put it over here, at I am Lene Javette. I, at I am Lene Javet is my handle um, across social media. So come find me on Instagram. That's where I do a lot of posting and whatnot. Um, I'm rebranding, so I'm re-upping. So if you see like my brand looking a little bit, it's because I'm in the process of rebranding. I got some super dope new stuff I'm working on and bringing back out. And so um, this is a really great time to get to hang out with me. Sorry, I literally have a hair in my eye. This is a super great time to get to know me and grow with me because I got some fresh stuff coming up. And uh, this is the time. This is the time. This is this. This is the time. So on that note, I bid you all farewell. 
Thank you so much for spending time with me. I humbly thank you. I will be back on here tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure again. I don't know the time. I never, I don't know exactly what time it's going to be, but it'll be tomorrow. You can catch me um, tomorrow. I'll be live and I'll be talking about a different topic that we'll be discussing at the Black Power Lifestyle Retreat. On that note, I'm Lene Javet, CEO and founder of Upscale Noir, the creator of the Black Power Movement. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Be blessed and have a good night. Peace.